Thanks, Daniel. Um, yeah, my name's Sherman Skolton. Uh, I'm with OB High Technology. This is our third time at uh, Camelio mm -hmm. World. Uh, we missed last year, but we're here the, the previous two years. Um, like what Daniel said, we make endpoints. We make analog phone adapters and we make IP phones. And what I'm gonna show you today is an API that we've put together uh, that is uh, partnered with a web portal. Uh, so they kinda, the, the two kinda go together. Um, and in essence, all the functionality that's on the web portal and more is being brought forward into this uh, kind of RESTful-like API. Um, my email address is, is there, so feel free to contact me anytime uh, with questions. I did not uh, code the API. I didn't code up this demo. Uh, a couple developers at OBI helped me do that. Um, but I think I can uh, sh uh, show you guys uh, the, the meat of it enough to make it uh, interesting to you. But again, I'm happy to answer any questions to you. Uh, any questions for you uh, here at the, at the forum or um, go ahead and send me an email. Also, the, this demo uh, we've put into a zip file that you can download and check out the examples of the JavaScript that's in there uh, that's being used to exercise the API. Uh, that's at the fw.obhi.com uh, slash kwdemo.zip. Uh, and then also we have a document that describes what we call our device management platform. Uh, this, uh, the, this is for primarily service providers and system integrators that are looking for endpoints that can be managed. Uh, one of the things that we're running up against is as these IP networks, these real-time IP networks are built out, they're all diff different kinds of endpoints that people want to connect to them. So, you know, just had a great presentation on how to test, uh, you know, uh, WebRTC clients, uh, you know, from a, I guess, a browser point of view, but it could be on a lot of different devices. Uh, but what OBHI does is we make an embedded uh, uh, platform uh, hardware, and that uh, can fit into a lot of different uh, services and into a lot of different places. Um, uh, Carson talked about uh, voice over LTE. We have a lot of service providers coming to us today wanting to use our endpoints with uh, Volte networks, uh, both for PSTN landline replacement, great application for LTE, uh, but, and so, you know, how do you send a fax over LTE? Uh, how do you uh, open a door over LTE? Uh, how do you just have an analog phone conversation over LTE? Uh, so we're doing a lot of that today, all the way to the desk phone where uh, there's a lot of activity today in this kind of small business hosted space where um, I think, again, LTE is gonna make a big impact. Vodafone has a service that they're pushing hard uh, that's a, a converged voice and data service uh, over wireline or wireless, uh, and in the US, uh, Verizon's doing the same thing. AT&T is soon to follow suit. So there's a lot of activity here, especially in the small business space. Uh, so uh, Daniel talked a little bit about OBHI. Uh, we've got a long history uh, in this space, going back um, you know, almost 20 years now uh, to some of the very first voice over broadband endpoints. Uh, and right now we're taking, you know, kind of, I guess you could wonder what's new and innovative in, this, in the hardware endpoint space. Well, we're taking this cloud approach and this platform approach uh, towards management. Uh, in old uh, kind of telco speak, there's this term uh, FCAPs. And let me get to my uh, FCAPs, a couple of service providers. Um, So FCAPS is, like I said, an old school telco term, but it was something that if you were gonna launch a service, uh, you had to have your FCAPS story solid and bulletproof before you could even talk about what you're actually gonna sell to the subscriber. And so FCAPS stands for Fault, uh, Configuration, Accounting, Performance, and Security. So we all approach that uh, from different angles today using different tools, and what OBHI is doing is trying to provide endpoints that kind of come you know, prepackaged with interfaces so that service providers can have this uh, FCAPS element to their, uh, to the endpoints that they're deploying. And this is really 
the type of thing that you really have to tackle when you're talking about millions and millions of endpoints uh, that are on the network. And it's one thing to be able to strictly control it in, from the uh, uh, standpoint of a standard uh, like that's in you know, 3GPP uh, uh, LTE, uh, but then off, oftentimes, especially if we're talking about a lot of these over the top uh, type scenarios, which some of these you know, tier one service providers that I'm talking about, uh, are doing is there's not, there, you kind of have to approach management a different way when, when, uh, when the service is running over the top. And then this also gives us another opportunity to take kind of latest advancements in uh, big data, um, uh, analytics, uh, grabbing all this information and uh, using it to provide a, a, better, a better service. So, at the uh, beginning, uh, we're, we, we need to provision and bootstrap the devices, and there's lots of flexibility that typically needs to be built into how you do that with the device. Um, and a lot of it then, that, that's kind of the day zero uh, problem that we're solving with bootstrapping. And then the day one uh, uh, and, on, and beyond problems of customer support, this, uh, this uh, FCAPS interface uh, also assists that. So what we have is, a cloud that we built for the endpoints uh, that we refer to as OBTalk or the OBTalk device management platform. Uh, and then that plays in concert with other interfaces that the devices use for things like their connectivity with SIP uh, or other provisioning servers. And at OBHI, we started to solve this early on because as a startup company, uh, we're uh, bootstrapped uh, entirely uh, internally by um, kind of angel uh, investors. We have no outside funding, and so the path to profitability uh, as soon as possible was very important. And so since we are pretty good at making these endpoints, what we did is ma first made an analog telephone adapter endpoint, phones take longer, uh, and we basically started to sell these things to anybody that wanted to buy them. And we went to, uh, we went to online merchants like Amazon.com and started to sell the devices. And then along the way, a couple of our engineers figured out how to get the devices to natively connect to a service provided uh, by Google called Google Voice uh, for free. And this basically provided people with a, a free phone number. Uh, and as long as you use our device uh, uh, for, um, to connect your regular telephone uh, with your Google Voice account, well, there you have a free, a free telephone. So that really helped the company um, grow uh, and put more money into this cloud platform uh, with the main uh, idea that we were here to serve people like you. We were here to, we, the, the idea of the company was to build, you know, build a better mousetrap in terms of the endpoints with a focus on, on provisioning in the cloud. So this, uh, this portal that I'll show, this API that's underneath the portal, uh, a lot of that, that's, most of that is used every day by hundreds of thousands of people who have gone to Amazon and bought a little device to use with their, their Google Voice account. So that's really helped us, you know, you can imagine to have real world users that are exercising this configuration and management portal every day uh, that can, you know, really help you, uh, help you strengthen it and harden it. So the first thing is how do you add devices uh, so that they can be managed, uh, so that they can be bootstrapped to your uh, platform. Uh, and there's ways that we've created where you can manually, manually do it, so especially for those BYOD uh, people, those people who are going to bring their own service to their device, there's a manual way to sign up at obtalk.com and then add a device to your, add a service to your device. Same thing for the service providers. If you just have a device that you grab, there is a manual, there's a manual way that you can you can do that. And the whole idea here is that you get that device into your management domain, you bind it to your account, and then you can do things like add services, like monitor services, um, and exercise it with the API. We also have a approved service provider program. This is where people who get their device from anywhere, from Amazon, from Newegg, from whatever, from, you know, as a gift, they can go, again, go and use this uh, ASP program to attach a service to their, uh, to their device. This one is a little bit, there's an API underneath this that works with the button on our, our web page, our consumer uh, end web page, 
with your service. So it makes it really simple for somebody who knows nothing about SIP, who knows nothing about a SIP username or password or proxy server. They just click this button. We tell you about the subscriber. We let you sign them up. And then you send back uh, basically the, 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 the bootstrapping config. Uh, you could even send back a full config if you want to the device. And then where things start to get, I think, more interesting is where your business model is more of a, you want to deliver a device to a customer. They just you know, plug in the power, they, they, uh, they, they connect it to the internet, and it's good to go because something has happened uh, either before the device arrived and got installed or something happens right when it gets installed that allows this automatic uh, binding of the subscriber to their, to their device or devices. Uh, and this is uh, a very uh, straightforward way uh, to do it when we do it uh, direct. We can scan the MAC addresses of the devices, put them into your uh, device management platform account, and then um, they're there. You'll see them as pending. I'll show you a screenshot of that. Uh, the other way is if you get the devices from a distributor or for whatever reason you don't see them in your account, then you can claim them into your account by just uh, putting in information about the device and, uh, and you'll be able to bring them into that zero touch mode uh, uh, that way. Uh, and we also have something called the SAC or service activation code. Um, this is used uh, by several service providers today where the customer receives their OB device. The service provider doesn't really care which device they received because at the time they get it, they go to the service provider's webpage, say, activate my device, follow some instructions, dial a code on the phone, and their, uh, like I said, their subscriber count their subscriber account is bound, is, is uh, associated with their device. Um, this isn't coming out that great on the, uh, on the, on the portal uh, or on the, the screen, but this is the, the web uh, interface of the portal. So basically we're showing uh, a little bit of information about the devices, uh, their online or offline status, and you can just click into the devices to, to manage them. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, if you, like I said, if you want to add one manually, you just, uh, on the left-hand side, there's an add device uh, uh, menu, and then you just follow the instructions to uh, add the device. You basically dial a, uh, a, a, a code that will uniquely bind that, that, a unique code that binds that device to your account. Uh, and in the case of a, a phone, um, you'll see a little message pop up that says that you've added your device. You confirm it on the web page, and there you go. Uh, I talked about the ASP. We have several service providers that have a button on the ASP web page. You could too. Uh, and that's where somebody comes to our page and selects your service. Um, and then we've got the zero touch uh, uh, modes, which uh, Either they're coming directly from us or a distributor and they've been pre-assigned to you uh, or uh, you've received them and you've got the ability to claim them in uh, to your uh, account as a zero touch device or the service uh, activation code. So here, if we have provided you with devices directly or directly from a, a distributor, you would see uh, the devices uh, already in your um, portal and with a ZT pending status. And then again, there's an API associated with this where you can also have a machine query your database, uh, basically looking for the devices that have been added in there by either OB High or a, a distributor. And these are, are you know, kind of your, your stock, your inventory of devices that are available to be, to be sent. Uh, now the claiming, uh, in the case of a direct ZT, we basically have claimed claim them for you, um, or you can claim them yourself. You basically go to the claim device area. Uh, you can do it one by one with a Mac and a serial number, and then uh, choose the ZT profile that you want to assign to that device. Different phones, uh, different customers, different devices might have a different ZT profile. A ZT, a zero touch profile is essentially just a, a bootstrapping config that's going to do whatever you want uh, the device to do. And it also becomes a, uh, it also has some permanency to it in that it becomes the device's default setting. So if that device is ever a factory reset, it will come back and behave that way as, uh, as well. So this, this is the claiming screen. And then the service activation code. Uh, this is a screenshot 
from a customer of ours uh, called dialpad.com. They use the service activation code. Um, and there's kind of two modes. One is, did the device get assigned to the service provider in a ZT mode? And then they are able to show just an activation button on the screen of the phone. And they just click activate. And then on the, on the user portal, they're telling the user to, to enter a, an activation code. Or if the person went to the store and bought the phone themselves or got it delivered by Amazon them, themselves, then they actually have to do a little bit more work. They have to dial a specific uh, access number that's associated with that service provider and then enter the activation code um, uh, that the service that, 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 that they show. So what happens behind the scenes is when they use the service activation code, uh, the service provider calls uh, the OBTalk API, the, SA, the service activation code API for an activation code, and then they can show that code to the, to the customer. The customer then uh, enters that code in the phone. Either they connect the phone to a, uh, a service through this OBTalk connection, uh, or it's predetermined because they've got that activate button on there, and then they enter the code, and then we send back uh, uh, a... Uh, a response to the service provider that uh, the code that, that this user entered is, is, is valid, and here's the MAC address and the model type uh, that that user that they, ha that they already know is logged in uh, has used. And then that allows them now to uh, send back another uh, bootstrapping config, just like the ASP uh, API does as well, and then they can go ahead and bring the device into, into service. Okay, so underneath this, so, so that's, that's kind of what it takes to get the devices into your domain, into your management domain, into your uh, provisioning domain. And, uh, and then it, now it's up to you uh, how you want to use the management interface going forward. Um, one of the things that you can do with the API is, let's say you're using, uh, uh, you're using Camelio, you're setting up subscribers, in Camelio with an extension number and a password. Uh, you could also create a uh, kind of some glue in between that and the OBTalk API to now go ahead and assign that user, that extension and that password to uh, an account on an, on an OB device. Um, so the OBTalk uh, API uh, is a, a service interface. Um, you, your machine logs into it with a username and a password. Um, if it's right, we provide you a token. With that token, you can go on and, and perform uh, other, other functions. Uh, so the, as, a, as a client with an authorized token, uh, you're able to query the types of device models that you have or that you have available to you. Um, we have a concept called base profiles. This is a, a basic configuration, much like a ZT configuration, that you can assign to a device, that it'll, it'll pull it down from the OBTalk device management platform. Um, and you can also fetch which base profile is assigned to a particular device or group of devices. There is a sub-account uh, framework and, or a sub-organization framework in this uh, platform as well. So you can do that, say, I, okay, for this customer, I want to see what their base profile is set up or I want to modify uh, their base profile um, for all their devices. Um, and then we can also fetch what the state of the device is and samples of various uh, configuration values that are on that device. So you can really use the API uh, that and the, and the management tether on the devices for a lot of different a lot of different uses. Um, this is very handy in the case of, of the, if, if you don't have SIP connectivity yet to the device. So with, you know, for instance, uh, many of you know that with a SIP notify, you can uh, invoke a lot of things on clients, like to reboot them, to report their config, to report their status, but you have to have that SIP account set up. And sometimes devices for whatever reason, lose their connectivity with the SIP server. It could be a ALG in a router, uh, you know, firewall, uh, uh, some weird networking uh, scenario that's going on locally. But you still have, in many cases, you'll still have this management tether to the OBTalk device management platform. And so this is where you can use the API or use the portal to do things like, just for instance, simply re reboot the device. Um, 
So let's see, I'll take you through this in an actual uh, live uh, um, scenario, but you know, getting a token, identifying devices, uh, rebooting a device. So now let me go to the portal here. So here, for instance, is a device that looks like we've got um, so this is an this is I believe this phone here this OB um, uh, 1032 and right now it is I already had it configured to connect with this uh, Camelio instance that's running on my computer I haven't started it yet so right now it's failing register because there's nothing for it to register against but this is just this is what the management portal looks like for an individual phone where you can see it can have up to six SIP services running on that phone. You can assign the services to uh, the buttons, for example, if you want to do that. Uh, you can see a little bit of uh, the status, MAC address, things like that. Um, this is where you can do things like assign it to a, a, a particular organization I talked about. This might be customers of yours, it might be resellers that you, that you have set up that, that, that you wanna place that device into an organization. Once you do that, each organization can have its own, uh, its own member users, and those member users have various uh, uh, capabilities in terms of managing devices or managing base profiles. So some, and you can extend that to your users and they can only manage devices in their organization. Uh, of course, the top level service provider has access to all the devices and all the organizations. Uh, one also nice thing that we've got is if you wanna use the Obitalk device management platform as a provisioner, you can do that, and we have what's called the Obitalk configuration. This is an actual config that's hosted in the cloud for this device. Now, you don't have to use this. You can use your own provisioning server if you want, but if you do use this, then this is nice because this stores the profile in, in a safe place in the cloud in the case that you ever have to wipe out this phone, it'll come right back and download that config. Um, and then also, this is nice, this local configuration. I can actually get into the uh, the web UI of this phone um, and I can see what the actual running parameters are, uh, run, what, wh how it's running, how long it's been running, what firmware it's running, uh, and I can confirm that, that parameters that I've provisioned are indeed, those, those parameter values have, in, have indeed uh, taken and are, what's, are what the, the product is running with. So right here, I'm actually looking at the web page in this device. I can go ahead and go to its um, IP address uh, just to show you uh, that it is at, what does it say here, 101, 10.101. And I'll go in here, 10.101. So this is local. This is if I'm local, this is what we're all used to for the past you know, 15 years of these devices. Uh, and then um, where this is via the cloud. Uh, and so uh, you know, you're not always gonna, you're, in many cases, you'll never have access to this local uh, config. This phone is out who knows where in the world. But you can get to this same interface via the cloud piece and this is really for more inspecting the device, not so much for configuring it, because you'll either use your own provisioning server or, you'll, uh, or you can use uh, the, the Obitalk provisioning um, that we provide uh, you know, for each device in the cloud. And then here, if you want to reboot the device, you can even uh, from here go ahead and click reboot. And then if everything's working, yeah, this guy will go ahead and, 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 and reboot. Okay, so now what I'll do is bring up the Camelio. Uh, let's see. So it's running in this box. Start this. This doesn't take too long. OK. 
Okay. So I've got this, uh, these demos in this R Studio that was made for this. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start the camera. Let's see. Okay, so it's gonna go ahead and start, and if these guys will eventually register, now that the Camellia server's up and running, this guy was having some issues before. I saw he was offline. Let me see if this guy, can get this guy to come back online. Okay. Okay, well, hopefully it'll come back here. Um, now what we can do is uh, go ahead and um, I will uh, go to the, I'm gonna actually go to the uh, portal API. There's a document on the portal called Service API, and you can actually bring that up, and it's a live document where um, you can run um, some operations. So I'll go ahead and in here and create a session uh, for this guy. And then, um, let's see. Do a live request, paste this guy. And the password. I think that's right. Oops. Oh, that's not the right password. Dorian, maybe it's 1997. Uh, what's that? Oh, quotes. Oh, does it need quotes? Yeah. Let's see. Right there. Okay, there we go. Okay, got the token. Now, um, let me go and check out the devices. Let me list the collection of our devices. And I'm just gonna look at the, uh, I'm gonna also list the OB number. So I can list the OB number, the MAC address, serial number, the organization that it belongs to. Okay, and then let me grab the, I know it's towards the bottom here. Um, oh, it looks like this guy came back too. Uh, this device's OB number is NZEN 472652. Okay, that's it, so that's its device ID. And then um, again, like here in the, here, here's the, an API live request, for instance, to go ahead and uh, reboot that, that device. So what this will do is create this URL um, for the, the API, go ahead and do that. So that was just like what we did on the, on the uh, I think I did that right, All right? Seven two. Is that the right one? Yeah, there we go. So then that just rebooted the device. Okay, now back to the. 
So um, let's say if I am going to uh, set up a Kama Elio um, uh, device, let's say that I want to configure, um, let's say I want to change the password uh, in the in the OBHI device, um, I can go ahead and um, go to the uh, go to the device that's using, let's see, that's 3000, that's extension 3001. And I'll change the password to 1111. Okay, so what this just did is it's going to the OBTalk API, just like what I was showing on the live document. It's creating a session. Uh, it's going to um, uh, find uh, that device uh, that's uh, you, the user 3001, uh, and it's going to change its, its password. And then eventually this device will um, become unregistered once it tries to uh, you know, re-register uh, re with the, the Camellio. Um, I'll go ahead and do it with this 3002 unit as well. Okay. And, and so this is just you know, showing, updating a configuration on a device. Um, and this is definitely a, a powerful use of the, the, the API. Uh, you can use the OBTalk API to push configs to the device. And like I said, you're setting them up in Camellio, and then you're packaging them up and putting them and sending them to the, the, the OBHI device. Um, but then the other thing is pulling information out of the devices. So pulling statistics, uh, not only configurations, uh, but uh, very soon you'll also be able to pull things like uh, call quality data, network quality data. Um, and so this is uh, another uh, point of truth uh, to be able to troubleshoot network problems, site-specific problems, uh, device-specific uh, problems. Um, so let's see, then we uh, want to go now to... So I think I've got to wait for these guys to go. Actually, why don't I go back to this guy. I'll go ahead and reboot this guy. And then let me go to this, the collection of devices. I'll go ahead and get the device ID for this guy as well. Let's see. This is OB number 6301879500. Okay, that's this guy. We'll go ahead and reboot him. Okay. Okay. And then let's see. Three thousand one.
Okay. Okay, so you see these guys just became uh, unregistered. And now I, because I just changed the password in Camelio to uh, 1111. And now to go to the device and uh, let me see if I don't get lost here. Um, to do the unit three oh two one one one. I thought that I did that. I think there might be a little bit of a network issue that's causing this to delay a little bit, but Okay, that one completed. And 301. Change the password there. One. Okay, so then it's basically going out, again, it's going out to the API, creating a session pulling down the config, matching the config uh, and the config types, and, um, and then uh, going out to uh, grab the, the parameter value, uh, update it with the new uh, config, and then here's the, the uh, each configuration has an associated uh, uh, numerical ID uh, to you know, keep track of that, and what its uh, default setting is, and what values it, it, it's at. Um, so here it shows changing the extension of uh, the extension 3001 to a uh, value of uh, password value of, of 1111. Uh, and then uh, it will eventually go out and update the phone. With that. I think part of this is the the registration retry interval that these phones are, are using right now, which is why they're taking this amount of time. So change user kind of Camellio, one on one. And then let's see, this one, two, 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 two. Okay, so oh, I didn't change I didn't change that to one 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 one. I don't think. And three thousand two. Let's see, that was this was was MAC address ECC. Okay, that one's rebooting now. So I think that this one just got the new password, and this guy is MAC address F A O C Okay. Update the password in Camellia to one 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 one. This guy rebooted uh, and came back uh, registered, and then um, this guy's now unregistered, and in a second here, uh, he'll receive, he'll, he'll uh, re-register with the, uh, he's got the right password, and he'll now register uh, successfully with the right password. And I can't remember what the re-registration is, though, on this. It, it'll take that long. Okay. So... Okay, and there, yeah, he's registered now. Okay, so uh, that's all I wanted to show today was something as basic as changing the password on the SIP account.
But like I said, any of the, there's literally about 3,000 parameters that can be touched uh, on the device uh, using this API uh, as on top of uh, grabbing uh, statistical information from it for its online status, its uptime, its firmware version, really anything about the device that you can gather from it locally, you can, uh, you can get uh, via the, the API. Um, and, then, uh, and then for those of you who are interested in this, uh, we have uh, free units that are uh, available. Just c come see me. I'm waiting for a couple of uh, uh, packages to, should have arrived on Friday, but uh, having some issues tracking them. So if they don't show up, don't worry. I'll uh, get you guys uh, devices uh, that you can uh, try out uh, in your own environments. Uh, but this, from the standpoint of, I think, innovation in this, in this industry, um, obviously there's tons going on with uh, iOS and Android uh, and WebRTC, uh, but a lot of the, a lot of the, the endpoint action uh, in this industry still resides in these embedded, uh, embedded products. And, um, and especially now uh, that the service providers and uh, you know the 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 marketing people at the service providers are ready to actually start promoting uh, uh, IP services uh, for for real time communications. Uh, it hasn't always been uh, that easy. Uh, so uh, thank you thank you very much. And uh, like I said, come by uh, and talk. I'll be uh, at a table uh, outside for the next couple of days. Thank you. Questions? Anyone? Ole. Okay. Ole loves devices. Um, sorry to have to be the boring type, but you're hosting a lot of data on customers, which according to European privacy laws is covered by the privacy laws and can't be exported. Uh, how do you handle that kind of situation in your systems? I notice your servers are up on Amazon right. somewhere. Yeah, so right now the, um, the servers are on, are on Amazon uh, in the US. Um, and on a, and, a, and I think that that's, that's fine for the most part for companies that are, are, are in the US, yeah. um, but for companies that are here in Europe, there's kind of, the, 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 as I understand it, there's kind of two modes that are potentially acceptable. One is to have it at Amazon, uh, say here in Germany, uh, and then the other one is to completely uh, disasso uh, disassociate the customer data uh, to the, a server that's owned by the customer. Um, I, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't use the, the API uh, in conjunction with their devices, but like you said, the, the customer-specific information needs to reside elsewhere. Even the IP address is customer-specific privacy protection. Okay. Okay, question? Okay. Um, hello. So, uh, some of the protocol behind the scenes running there to communicate with these devices, namely behind NAT, uh, are you using some kind of TR69 for uh, like requesting the device to reboot itself or to report some data back to the cloud? Uh, what exactly are So you... it's a, co a combination of things, but primarily it's just uh, an HTTPS connection to the device. Uh, so fairly NAT, NAT friendly. Um, we uh, do have, though, a, a, a whitelist of servers and, and domains that need to be taken into consideration for, um, to allow this, this, this to work. Um, but for the most part, it, it works. It's very... Uh, so when I log in into the cloud platform and inquire the phone to send me data, uh, in that case, is the phone like on a separate process reporting like every second or so, or do I actually inquire the phone in that moment to report back the data? The phone maintains a registration with the Obitalk device management platform, and okay. then we can kind of you know tickle it. With, yeah. a re with a request. 
well, it works like a VPN yeah. over HTTP, some, some, something like that. Okay. Something like that, yeah. Okay, okay. James. James. Front row, very active. Um, you touched on the fact that the, these OB phones are one of the few uh, phones that actually support both Opus and AMR wideband. Can you just uh, explain a little bit about the use cases um, that you would anticipate? Well, uh, you know, a couple of years ago we started working on these phones, and along with that, uh, you know, the, at OB High, we, uh, the development team, uh, can develop down to the DSP level, so we can put any codec you want on it. Um, that, that uh, yeah, just, just just to clarify, yeah. when we say Opus and AMR, th this is the full variable rate, or is it fixed rate? Anyway? Uh, today it's variable rate. The very first full. release it wasn't, but then yeah, a, few I know. Weeks, a few months later... What fun we had was. with that. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the idea there is that uh, is that with Opus, uh, we do have a lot of service providers who are running an over-the-top service. They have standardized on Opus for both their soft phone, uh, mobile, uh, fixed uh, soft phone, as well as their IP phones. And that way, uh, they're able to maintain a higher level of voice quality between the devices, uh, uh, regardless of, you know, especially we've noticed Opus is obviously very uh, very uh, wireless um, friendly, um, wireless network friendly. And so many, many devices are on Wi-Fi. Our devices actually can run on Wi-Fi as well. Opus tends to perform better than uh, other codecs that are out there. Uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, royalty free. Um, although a lot of service providers continue to use G722, and the majority st continue to use G711. Um, for AMR, uh, that's kind of a new, new thing. Uh, what, in the mobile world? In the mobile world, because... Mobile world, everybody's been using it for years. They're using it, they're using it for the, for, yeah, for, for years, but it, it hasn't really been deployed on, the, on desktop clients yet. And so now with primarily voice over LTE and the desire to take the uh, transcoding uh, out of the connection, I think a lot of it is some for performance, a lot of it is for cost. The SBC guys charge a lot of money for transcoding AMR to X. Uh, and so we've had a lot of requests to have AMR directly on the, the endpoint. And we've done it. We've, we have it available today uh, for testing. Uh, AMR is one of those codecs that costs money. If you're Samsung uh, or an Apple, you know, big deal. But uh, when you're OB High, we need to really understand what the opportunity is before we actually put it in a production release. And was I the first to ask for it? You weren't, actually, but no. you're close, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then one somehow related question on media processing. Uh, it's OB High supporting like WebRTC encryption, so I can call from web browser to an OB High without uh, encryption decryption of the RTP? Uh, I believe that that's possible. We do support a WebRTC uh, uh, client, uh, actually, and server on the device in a, a WebSocket implementation, okay. SIP over WebSocket. Um, and so along with that comes some, yep. uh, in, some security, yeah. Okay, last question, if any. Okay, Sherman, thank you, and don't forget to... Thanks.